The scale of the floods in Pakistan is difficult to grasp. As Fahad Said, a climate impact scientist in Islamabad recently said, words like colossal, mammoth, and gigantic don't do justice to the situation. 33 million people are affected. That's more than the population of Australia. Perhaps that gives you some idea of the enormity of this disaster. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Those who have seen the pictures coming out of Pakistan have seen the deadly face of this climate catastrophe. I speak to my ammi and relatives back in Pakistan every night who are beside themselves at the death and destruction with one third of the country underwater and so many lives, livelihoods, homes and infrastructure lost. My heart, my thoughts and my duas are with those who are suffering. I've been meeting with the Pakistani-Australian community here who have come together so quickly to raise funds to support the relief and reconstruction efforts. The Pakistani community is known for its generosity and where, wherever they are, they are opening up their hearts and their wallets. I cannot say the same for the Australian government. The $2 million of aid they have committed to is in fact insulting. It is nowhere near our fair share. Australia needs to do more. The floods in Pakistan were caused by monsoon rains 10 times more severe than normal. Global warming is melting glaciers, which are worsening the floods. This is a climate-fueled disaster. The harsh reality is that disasters like this will happen again and again unless there is strong and urgent action to tackle the climate crisis. Pakistan is one of the most climate vulnerable countries in the world, but has contributed little to the climate emergency. The people of Pakistan are paying with their lives and livelihoods for a crisis knowingly created and exacerbated by the global north. And despite multiple warnings from experts, the scientific consensus about the causes of the climate crisis, rich countries like Australia refuse to do what's necessary and stop digging up coal and gas. At the core of the crisis is the Global North's rampant extractive capitalism and pursuit of incessant economic growth, whatever the cost. The cost of this greed is being paid by countries and their people like Pakistan. The extreme greed is mirrored by an extreme stinginess when it comes to the consequences of that crisis. Rich countries promised finance to help poorer countries deal with, the climate, deal with climate change as a recognition of their responsibility for historic carbon emissions. But the promise of $100 billion of climate finance by 2020 has never been met. I call on the government to face the global injustice of this climate crisis and act to tackle it. And this means providing urgent aid to Pakistan not just a mere $2 million, but a much bigger amount commensurate with Australia's historic and ongoing responsibility for the climate crisis and equivalent to the scale of the disaster. This is an issue of global justice. Aid funding and climate finance is about compensation and a debt owed for the terrible legacy of colonialism. It is not charity. It is about righting historic wrongs. And given Australia's dirty hands in producing climate changing emissions, we have a special responsibility to do everything we can for climate justice. And of course, the government must take strong, meaningful, meaningful action on climate. This means signing the Global Methane Pledge and ruling out new coal and gas projects. It is untenable to keep pouring fuel on the fire, to keep sac sacrificing the lives and livelihoods of those in poorer countries to maintain the profit margins of fossil fuel conglomerates many of whom fill political donation buckets of both the big parties. This disaster is deeply painful and deeply personal for me. I was made in Pakistan. It's where I grew up, where my elders instilled in me the spirit to stand up not just for myself, but to stand up for my community and to never stay silent in the face of injustice and unfairness. And there is no greater unfairness and no greater injustice than the climate crisis.